Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Bose RV 20 amp solar charge controller and I'm going to replace it with the old one I have in my emergency power unit for my ham radio gear. Alright everybody, welcome back. So what I have in the old emergency power unit there that I built ages ago is an 8 amp charge controller. It's a cheapy one, you know, it's kind of one you'll find in uh, Actually, I think I bought it from an RV place um, here in town. Um, we have a large people of snowbirds that come in and out, so we have a lot of RV uh, stores and gear like that. So this is what it looks like. Let me move this out of the way. And I'll show you the old one. Here we go. And it's one of these deals. You know, it's not horrible, but I would really rather put in something a little bit better now that I upgraded the solar panel. So what we're going to do is replace it with this one here. This is from a company called Bose RV. You might remember I did their 20-watt uh, 20, uh, 20 solar panel recently. Um, and I figured this is just a little bit better, a little bit uh, more of an upgrade. We're not going to be using the load terminals on this, just the battery and the solar. And I am going to set up, let me walk it through, there's, a, there's a, uh, the instructions here, I have a setup instructions. I am using a gel cell battery, so I want to make sure that when you're using a gel cell battery, I'm not overcharging it. You don't want to do that. So you really, your peak charging volts shouldn't exceed 4.7. Should be a high of 4.1 and a load off of about 11.6 on a gel cell battery. And the load should be set to come back on when it shuts off, you know, low voltage, at about 12.5. So this one has six different protections. It's got an over, over temperature protection, open circuit, short circuit, overload, reverse prevention circuit, and a reverse current protection. In other words, it's not gonna let your power drain back out the panels once it's dark out. And that's why it has the dual MOS circuit to prevent the reverse current and uh, reduce the heat and operation a little bit too. You, a bunch of parameters you can set in this. You can tailor the system for you. There's so many different ways um, in, in the manual here. I'm just going to read it to you really quick. You've got, you can seal, seal lead acid, gel, flooded lead acid, uh, lithium batteries, and lithium ion phosphate batteries. So it'll pretty much do anything. Um, again, we're just using a gel battery in this unit, so that's what we're going to set it up for. Now, one of the nice things about this is it does have USB on the bottom here if you want to plug USB directly into it and power it off the panels. I am not going to do that because I have USB plugs out here, and where I'm going to be putting it is going to be kind of inconvenient to do that. However, if I had something I permanently wanted to power with USB, that would be an awesome feature. It would be a little extra plug for me to do something there that uh, I couldn't do any other way. It is very easy to hook up. It even comes with little terminals. So we're going to be clamping those on. I'm just going to clip that old one out of there. And we're going to clamp the new terminals on and put them on the battery and the solar side. And we're going to see how it works. I mean, uh, I'm completely new to it. It looked like it was a decent unit. It had decent reviews. So I figured let's give it a try and uh, see how it works. So I'm not going to show you me the whole operation of me putting it in there because we really want to focus on the charge controller. But what I am going to do is take the old one out and show you this once it's hooked up. I'm going to try and figure out the programming. Seems pretty simple. You just push that one red button. I believe it's, let's see, setting method. Press and hold for two seconds until the number flashes, then press to adjust. So, pretty simple uh, operation there. So let's give it a try. I'm going, to un I'm going to disconnect the old one in there, hook this one up, and we'll give it a try. All right, so I have the battery connected first. And here are your settings. You just push and hold on this twice. Okay. And that already is set. This already detected the battery, so it won't let me ch change a different battery. This has already been detected and set up. It is in 24-hour charge mode. That's the temperature cutoff. You can choose whether you want to see the amps that are coming in or the power that's coming in out. I'm sorry, the amps in or amps out. You can choose this here, and this is what we have set up here. We want to see what's coming in through the panel or that. So that's how we're going to do it there. That's going out to that uh, USB plug or to your load. And that's pretty much it. So you've got that all set up there. We're going to opt out of that. Let me get out of here. <laughs> that mode there. And there you go. Okay. So it's all set there. So it's really simple to program, really simple to use. Um, for, for my purposes here, as far as attaching it, I'm just going to use some hook and loop fastener. However, you can do screws on the side. I'm just going to use hook and loop here in case I ever do have to remove this. Um, it's just going to sit right against here in the, in the inside. Um, I was a little bummed out that I couldn't see the display inside here, but I already have a display outside of this uh, thing here for my voltage, so I don't really need that all that much. What we're going to do now is hook up the, uh, the solar end of things, 
and these are the two wires here. So I'm going to put clips on those, hook up the solar end, then I'm going to take it over to where I have it stored, and we'll actually watch it in use and see it working. So far, works pretty good, does exactly what it's supposed to do. So we'll be right back. Alright, it's all connected, it's in my little corner here, this is a really cramped space. <laughs> Let me put the solar input in, and there we go. Showing a solar panel, there's a voltage going up. I hope you guys can see that, I zoomed the camera in for you. So it looks like a successful installation. And there we are at 14.2, right where I set it to hold. That's generally where you want it for gel cell batteries. So now all I have to do is put some double stick tape on the back of this and uh, finish up the installation and make it look pretty. And that's about it. So definitely seems to be doing its job. I like the fact that you can set it for different types of batteries. I may decide to gut this thing one day and put a car battery in here or a lithium polymer battery or, you know, I can change it and I don't have to worry about it. So let me get it all installed there. I'll show you what it looks like finally and we'll wrap up the video. All right, believe it or not, everything in here is fairly well put together. <laughs> it's just kind of a tight pack. Um, I got my radio in there. Okay, got my uh, microphone, my radio, and more than enough ample room here if this gets warm you know, away from this. But chances are, if this is going to get warm, I'm going to be charging and I'm going to be using the radio. So I'm not really worried about it storing in here. Um, you got more than, you know, I got a hand that I could fit down in there. And if I pull out the radio, you'll see. Let me pull out this stuff here so you can kind of see what's going on. I have my manual for my radio in there too. So there you go. It's all set in there. Working perfectly. Um, definitely impressed with it. You know, for, for the price, it's really not a bad deal. And if I do decide to upgrade my batteries or upgrade my solar panel, you know, I have a, a, a 20-amp-hour battery in here right now, a uh, gel cell. So if I ever decide to take this bigger and make this a bigger unit, I could easily do that without a problem. So all in all, like I said, I'm impressed with the unit. It's doing its job. We're going to try it out long-term. It's impossible to uh, test something like this short-term and give you a full review on it until we know it works for, you know, more than a week. But I got a feeling this is going to work pretty well. I've used these before. They are PWM chargers, charge controllers. So, you know, they, they do what they're supposed to do. There's really not much to it. And again, I'm not asking too much of it to charge a little battery here with a 50-watt panel. So, all in all, good deal. They run about $24.99, $25. Bucks. Um, I will give you a link down below where you can pick one up. I've been looking to upgrade that old charge control. This is the, the old little 8-amp cheapy one. And this one's going in the garbage because it's, it's, it's probably done. Um, I was having a problem with the the yellow light, and then this one was turning yellow, and then this was turning green, and they were both on, and it's probably not working as well as it should. However, the voltage stayed at 14.2 all the time, so I wasn't really worried about it. But anyway, that is the, uh, the Bose RV 20 amp solar charge controller. It is fully configurable. It uh, does its own intelligent sensing with the type of battery you are using. It will work with a 12 or 24 volt system, any kind of battery you can think of, and... Uh, Really cool system all in all. So I'm happy with it. We're going to stick this back in the corner there after wiping it up and putting it away. And uh, like I said, link will be down below for where you can pick one up. They're fairly simple, very easy. You just connect your battery to one side, your solar to the other, where it says solar, negative and positive battery. You can put a light or a load in here if you want and run it just off the solar. And you can turn the uh, two. You can't see them underneath there. That's why I said I probably won't be using them because I have out front, I have USB plugs. But they do have two USB plugs, so if you mount this on a wall and you want to configure it in your RV, say, and it's dark, you can plug in a light there, a little USB handle light, something like that, and uh, see what you're doing. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. That link will be down below, as well as my Amazon store link. Don't forget to check out the links in my Amazon store. I have all of the gear I review in there. Everything from ham radios to survival gear to prepper gear. Um, everything in there. So check them out. And our Thrive Life link as well. You probably want to start stocking up on food right about now with the way things are going in the world. So you can check out the Thrive Life link as well as our Food for Patriots link, which is preparewithiridium.com, and also our freeze-dry wholesaler link, which will be down there below. If you follow that link, you will save 15% on your orders. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.